Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. Last week I was telling the people, I said, Amen. Make sure you come invite a friend, someone. Amen. But I'm grateful for those that are here. Amen. Because last week I told them, I said, I'll be coming from the topic that purpose is still calling. Purpose is still calling. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Purpose is still calling. And I, I want to I wanna just start off with this phrase on today. Amen. Just to, just to, amen, get you thinking a little bit. Stir your mind up and get your spirit moving. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. It's this is that. That thing that you don't surrender to God will take you to God. To surrender. That thing that you don't surrender to God. I, I, I know some of you are reflecting right now because, amen, there are places in our lives that we haven't fully surrendered to God. I, I ain't going to stand here like a hypocrite. Glory to God. I believe, glory to God, I'm not perfect by no means by the stretch of the imagination. But I am an imperfect man serving a perfect God. Hello somebody. Glory to God. And I know and it's been taught to me how to surrender. So with my imperfections I know how to go to the altar and surrender to God. Hello somebody. Glory to God. Amen. Might I remind you. Amen. About what Ephesians says in Ephesians chapter 2. Glory to God. Amen. Let me just read it for a minute here. Let me, let me scroll down. Amen. It says here in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversations in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, but God, hello somebody, but God, that thing that you don't surrender to God is the thing that will take you to God to surrender. Glory to God. I remember, glory to God, when I was in a hard situation. Glory to God. I, I knew I had to surrender that thing to God. But oh, but God, who is rich in mercy. For his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace he are saved and had risen us up together and, glory to God, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show us exceeding riches of his grace, his loving kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through faith and not yourself. This is the gift of God. Look at somebody and said, it is time for you to exercise your gift. It's time for you to exercise your gift. That thing that you don't surrender to God will take you to God for you to surrender. It is time for you to exercise the gift that God has given you. I want you to go to, amen, Jonah chapter 1. I got to talk about Jonah, amen. Glory to God, amen, a prophet of God, amen, in the word of the Lord. But the nice thing about this prophet of God is that, amen, even though God used him instrumentally to go forth and prophesy, amen, this prophet of God, amen, then write about the prophecies that God has given him. This prophet of God took the opportunity to write about him and his relationship with God. 
And that's what I love about Jonah. When we go to Jonah chapter 1, amen, and that's where I'm going to be camping out, amen, that first chapter. Amen, it says, And now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittal, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it. Go, 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 Jonah, and preach to Nineveh. Let them know, amen, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose and fled to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. And went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fear and went down to it. To go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Oh my God. What's going on here with the prophet of God? Ah, running from the presence of the Lord. Running from the assignment. Running from the word of the Lord. Glory to God. Have you ever been there? You ain't got to raise your hand. You ain't got to raise your hand. Glory to God. But I tell you, I've been there. I've, I've, I've been there. Why? Amen. Let's, let's continue on. Glory to God. Jonah is writing about himself. Glory to God. He said, and the Lord. Verse 4, and the Lord sent a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like unto be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried unto the man of God. Cried, wait, 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 wait. Let me reread that again. And then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. You see, on the ship, there were believers. But it's what they believed in. See, like you and I, we believe in the one true and living God. Amen. And he says, amen, and unto his God, and cast forth wares that they were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. I don't think that it's not that Jonah wasn't troubled by all what's going on. There was a sense of trouble, and they had to be. Glory to God. Because when you've been touched by God, there's no way you can run from God and God not trouble your spirit. But he decided to lay dormant, to lay low. Glory to God. He decided to be selfish and not help, glory to God, in the, the adversity that was going on round about him. So he lay low. Glory to God. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If it be so, God will, will think upon us and we perish not. Glory to God. And they said every man to his fellow, come, come. Let us cast lots. Amen. That we may know who caused this evil upon us. So that they cast lots and it fell upon Jonah. Look at somebody and say, you can run, but you can't hide. You can't hide, baby, from the call of God. You can't hide from the purpose of God. Glory to God. Why? Because purpose is still calling. In the midst of chaos, purpose is still calling. Can't see your way? Purpose is still calling. Don't know what's going on with your honey and your money looking funny? Purpose is still calling. So Jonah tried to hide. And when the lot fell upon him, it's like they're casting, amen, they're flipping a coin. Say, okay, amen, you heads, I'm tails. And everybody flipping a coin and they're casting the lots and they came to Jonah. Amen, look at how God got involved to show Jonah up. He can hide. He can hide. You can try to hide all you want. 
Hello, somebody. You can hide from the anointing. You know you've been brought up in church. I know I was brought up in church because my father's a pastor. And my father pastored churches. Amen. Many churches. Glory to God. And I still try to hide from God. Glory to God. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. But guess what? The purpose of God was already down on the inside and was calling me forward. So while I tried to run, he was still pulling me back. was still calling. Why? Because I remember when I was 16 years uh, and I was laying on the operating table 24 hours uh, with appendicitis ruptures on the inside of me. Uh, glory to God. They said you should have died. And when they're going to go, go inside to perform surgery, the Holy Ghost started moving in front of the doctor's eyes. And I said before I went in, God, if you let me live, I will preach your word. God knows how to get his purpose from all of us. The thing that you don't surrender to God is the thing that's going to drive you to surrender. I had to surrender. I couldn't hide. I tried it, but the storm would come, and the winds of life would blow, and somehow I would find my bearing back. But, but, but wait a minute. I got to contrast this is that this story seems so familiar, Bishop. It reminds me of one in St. Matthew's chapter 8. Same situation. Same outcome. Here is Jonah on the ship. And the sea is rough. And it's going to and fro. Glory to God. Amen. And I'm, I'm going to read and then I'm going to go. Amen. To St. Matthew's. Amen. And then I want you to go to St. Matthew's here. Amen. It said. And it, it fell upon Jonah. Verse 8. Amen. It says, Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation, and whence how comes thou? Where is thy country, and of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear God. I fear the Lord and the God of heaven which had made me made the sea and the dry you see even though they had some sort of belief in their God when Jonah started to distinguish his God they started reverence. Why? Because purpose is still calling. You got to understand this is that. Amen. The word that came to Jonah was to preach to Nineveh about their witness, their wickedness. That word was still moving, still alive, and still calling in the midst of Jonah's disobedience. But little did Jonah know, glory to God, how powerful the word of the Lord is. You may be in a situation where you're disobedient, but God still knows how to get the best out of you. So Jonah, there in the midst of his mess, God still used it. To bring forth deliverance upon the ship. Purpose was still calling. In your life, purpose is still calling. So what happened here? Amen. They said, in, 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 uh, we go, uh, and verse 10. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For we knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee? And the sea, for the sea to be come to us. For the sea wrought and was temptuous. Verse 12. And he said unto them, He said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So this shall the sea become for you. For I know 
that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men vowed hard to bring, to the, bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea was wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let this not perish for this man's life. And lay upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, has done well to please thee. So they took Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. Let's go to St. Matthew's chapter 8. This right here in my study was very troubling to me. It was very troubling to me. And the reason is this is that, glory to God, when we go to St. Matthew's chapter 8, Amen. Similar situation. Let's see what it says here. St. Matthew's chapter 8. Verse, start with verse 23 and 26. Amen. Verse 20. And, okay, let's go. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. Similar situation. Insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Similar situation. And his disciples came to him and, and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We perish. Verse 26 says, And he said unto them, Oh, why are you fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. Then he arose and he, wait a minute. Similar situation. But what's going on here? You and I could be in trouble. The same trouble. Glory to God. But what was disturbing to me is that the prophet of God wanted to be thrown out of the ship rather than being in the ship and speaking to the wind. Similar situation. But here's what he says. Scripture says, and he said, Jesus is speaking. Jesus wasn't moving as a deity. Jesus was moving as the man anointed by the spirit of God. You and I, we are anointed by the Spirit of God. And regardless of the tempest, regardless of the ocean, regardless of what's brewing in our life, we have the power either to join the mess or speak to the mess. It's just that simple. Jonah, but he still wanted to operate in disobedience. You mean to tell me this prophet of God is carrying the word of the Lord in his mouth that when this is not his first assignment, I'm sorry, it says Jonah chapter 1, but glory to God, amen, early on in the scripture, it talks about Jonah, it testifies of Jonah, this is not his first assignment, glory to God, so therefore, man of God, quit running, therefore, I'm speaking to you right now, purpose is still calling you can either join the mess and if you join the mess your mess is a setup for God to still get out of you what uh-huh similar situation winds the seas blowing all the madness is happening both men still sleeping. But what's the difference here? One spoke to the wind. See, in Ephesians, he said in the end to do what? Exercise your gift. What? This is the gift of God. You have the gift, but you've got to exercise your gift exercise your gift the tempest may be going
going. The winds may be blowing. Life situation is hard and you don't know what to do. I'm saying to you, stop sleeping. Get up. Get up, man of God. Get up, woman of God. Get up, young man. Get up, child, woman, grandmother, whoever you are. Get up and speak to the wind. Speak to the wind. It may be howling. You've got to speak to that wind. Glory to God. You've got to speak. You've got to speak. You've got to speak. God has given you a mount. God has given you something. God has given you a weapon. Use your weapon. Use your gift. Speak. Speak. Don't be selfish. Purpose is never selfish. Purpose is never ever selfish. So Jonah was exercising a level of selfishness. He was exercising a level of selfishness. And what was what's disturbing to me is this is that. Is that how we can be so selfish. And the enemy could use this selfishness to consume us. The enemy can use the selfishness to consume us. Why? Even though I'm not a perfect man, I serve a perfect God. And many times we think, glory to God, we have to be perfect. But God didn't call us to be perfect. God called us to be full. Faithful, yes, but also full. Because here's what the scripture says. The scripture says, being full of the spirit. So if I can be full every day, it doesn't matter my imperfection. Because if I'm full, I'm not walking, glory to God, amen, by myself. I'm walking with him. And if I'm walking with him, I have his word on the inside. Glory to God, if his word is on the inside, I can speak to that mountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Why? Because I'm walking full. That's why I got to surrender. I got to surrender, y'all. I got to surrender. I've got to surrender. Glory to I, I got to surrender. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Glory to God. I know I'm imperfect. I know I've got situations. Glory to God. But he didn't call me to be perfect. He called me to be full. And if I surrender enough, if I can get down on my knees far enough and throw my hands up and say yay Lord I believe that he going to touch my situation he going to speak to my situation and he's going to give me a word to speak to the wind to the storm to what I found it's happening in my life What's happening in my life? Come on, bring it on. Because I'm full today. I'm full of your word. I'm full of your spirit. I'm full with the word of the Lord. Doesn't matter what happens today. I know I'm full and I'm fully surrendered. Come on, somebody. Tell him yes. My God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, Lord, 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 hey. help me here. Oh, Lord. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he said here, he said here, and he said unto them, Why are you fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. He didn't say a whole lot, did he? He said, just use the little you got. 
O ye of little faith. Then he arose. Then he arose. Then, 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 then Brother Cleanan arose. Then, then Sister Donna arose. Then Elder Black arose. And glory to God, Sister Keisha arose. And glory to God, glory to God, uh, Brother Thier arose. And, and Brother Cornelius arose. And, and then they arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. Not, not just one thing. You see, but everything that was happening around them. You see, it doesn't matter what it was happening. It was brewing. It was causing a problem. Glory to God. So the ship was unsteady. You see, in life, it doesn't matter what it is. That's causing the problem. You've got to exercise the gift that God has given to you. You see, in my life, it may have been my honey was acting funny and my money. Glory to God was gone. Glory to God and my dog was biting me every day. They knew who I was. And then my captain just loses his mind and scratched me all over his face because they couldn't understand who is this walking inside the door. But all I can tell you this is that if you can speak to the sea and you can speak to the winner, it doesn't matter where the problem is coming in. It may be on your top. Glory to God. It doesn't matter where the problem is whatever is causing the problem I'm saying to you O ye of little faith speak 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 look at somebody and say speak glory to God glory to God speak Kobashata. Koriyanda Man of God, I'm telling you. <laughs> Glory to God. After you said that, and I see like a rod went out, like a lightning rod. Say it again. Say speak. Speak. Look at somebody and say speak. Yeah, I'm speaking to your spirit. Speak. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. So back to Jonah, back to Jonah. Glory to Anna Bashando Lobo Kodi Andaya. Hotamadi Andaya. Hodabashi Andaya. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See right there? Back to Jonah. The reason why this was so disturbing to me is that in verse 12, he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. Not only did he not speak to the wind and the sea, but there had to be a level of suicide there. And disturbing to me, what's disturbing is not only that, glory to God, is that he wanted to throw himself in the midst of what is going on. Knowing that he was going to die. But God already ordained something behind it. But I got to go back and I got to speak about that. Amen. Sometimes we can allow. You see, what I've understood is this is that whatever you feed is going to grow. Whatever you feed is going to grow. I'm going to speak about that. And I'm speaking about that. Respect. Whatever you feed is going to grow. The man of God was running from God. And while he was running from God, we don't know what was going on in his spirit. But I can tell you this he was battling with it himself. Sometimes, glory to God, it's not the battles round about you. We can speak to that. But that internal battle is sometimes bigger than the one that's brewing on the outside. And many times, that external battle that's happening is a cause of what's happening on the inside. The wind and the sea, the tossing, 
the madness that was going on was because of Jonah's dis. And he made up in his mind to disobey the word of the Lord. And that caused what was happening round about him. You see, many times we face an internal battle. And we reason sometimes, amen, glory to God, people get suicidal. And I'm addressing this because sometimes people get suicidal. It's because, amen, glory to God, they meditate upon the disappointment. And the disappointment becomes bigger. Why? Because what you feed is what's going to grow. And what they do is that they meditate on the disappointment and the disappointment becomes so overwhelming that they can't deal with what is happening. Let me talk about myself. I talk about myself, amen, because God has delivered me, healed me, and brought me a long way. You see, when I was in church, I was in church, and I was operating in ministry. And I had a kid out of wedlock. I was very disappointed in what I did. I was real disappointed. Why? Because I hurt those that was close to me. And I didn't know how to process it. I didn't know how to process the hurt. I didn't know how to process the disappointment. And I say to myself, Lord, amen, it's better you take me out than me dealing with it. Why? Because I was so focused on the disappointment and not focus on the purpose. And what happened in life is we can hurt those close to us. We can cause great disappointments. And we don't know how to process the disappointment. So what happened is that we meditate on this negativity of what I've done, why I've done it, why this has happened. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. And because we feed into it, what happens? It starts to grow like a cancer. It starts to take over. Glory to God. And then we start to say to ourselves, now that this thing has grown so insurmountable and we can see the solution that God has already provided we say to ourselves it's better I take myself out rather than owning up, dealing with it and going through it see I could talk about me because I've been set free I've been delivered you see but somebody is dealing with something internally and this eternal behavior is causing chaos round about them. But like I said in the beginning, the thing that you don't surrender to God is that thing that will drive you to God for you to surrender. So what happened? I had a child out of wedlock and I couldn't find my way. In my mind, I knew what I did was wrong, but I didn't know how to come out because the church folks was talking about me. People were saying all kinds of things about me, but they wasn't the one that was experiencing the disappointment. They wasn't the one in the shoes that I was walking you see, but oh, I thank God. I was able to surrender enough to God. That it didn't matter what they say anymore. What matters was what God said. What matters, God, to God is my position. I started getting on my knees. I started talking to God. And when I start talking to God, and I found my position, and he gave me my word, I started speaking, thus saying the Lord, and everything within my way had to get out. 
That's why I could stand up here and talk the way I talk. Because it don't matter what you say about me. I know the seas that I'm rebuking. I know the wind that I'm rebuking. I know, glory to God, what I got to do. You can say what you want. You can say what you want. But you ain't the one that's doing this here. See, if you was the one to rebuke the wind in my situation, you'd have been in the situation. You ain't the one. I'm the one. And God has anointed me to be the one. Why? Because somebody is coming behind me that went through the same situation and needs God to deliver them out of their situation. So when another brother come to me, I said, hey bro, you ain't got to throw yourself overboard. You ain't got to throw yourself overboard. I've been there, done that. And this is what I did. I surrendered to God. And I spoke to the wind. You see, I, I, I look at some of these people of status. Committing these suicides and stuff like that. Glory to God. But oh, 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 oh. If they only understood. It doesn't look good while you're in the midst of it. It doesn't look good while it's being made. Hello, somebody. It don't look good while it's being made, Bishop. But if you're like God, who sees the end from the beginning, you're going to understand how good I'm going to look when I come out. Hello, somebody. Huh? Huh? We just went through Thanksgiving. I hate to talk about food, but I ate some good food. But it don't feel good when you're cleaning them greens. It don't feel good steeping that turkey. That cornbread and glory to God, it don't look good when it's being made. But oh, when it's done. When that greens come all right, and you put the hot sauce on it. I don't know which one y'all use, but I use Frank. Frank, if you hear this word, you owe me. Hello, somebody. When you season that turkey right and you put it in the oven and it come out nice and golden but yet still moist, you know it's been done right. So what you do, everything that you do while it's being made, you're doing it to get the right outcome. Hello, somebody. So to the brother or the sister that's coming behind us, that's going through, glory to God, amen, we can speak to them. And say, no, no, no. You ain't got to do it that way, brother. You ain't got to take your life. Or you ain't got to take another life. Or you ain't got to, glory to God, just be the, the baby daddy. Or leave the baby alone. No, you can take care of the baby, glory to God, and still continue on in your purpose. Because that because you've been done wrong means that purpose has stopped calling. Purpose ain't going to stop till the day you die. But then there might be another purpose. Hello? Hello? I don't know. I, I may not be able to sing here, but maybe on the other side, you never know. I may get my gift. I might be able to sing then. But listen, in closing, in closing, glory to God. Amen. Got to go to the other device here. This one went out. Amen. Listen, in closing, I just want to, I just want to read this. Glory to God, because God has given me this year. Hallelujah. Just want to read this. He says, in the midst of chaos, Purpose is still calling. We are not perfect people, but we serve a perfect God. 
I'm being worked on and anything being worked on doesn't look good until the end from being, see, being the finished product. But it says, when it comes to Jonah, when it comes to Jonah, I believe the struggle was in the man and not in the call. Purpose will always still calling. When it comes to Jonah, and this is why I was, I was talking with the Holy Spirit, I believe that the struggle was in the man and not in the call. We all have a call. We have to realize that the call is always going to be, be bigger than the man. The call will always be bigger than the man. Always. Because purpose is never selfish. It's always going to be bigger than you. Because in order to get the best out of you, you have to give yourself to that which is greater. If you don't give yourself to that which is greater, you'll be operating in a level of selfishness, and that is not God. God is not a selfish God. That's why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus. Why? For each and every one of us, purpose is always bigger than the man. The call is always greater than the man. Glory to God. Let's all stand as I close. Hallelujah, wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah, wonderful Master. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, I just thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That you're saying to us that purpose is still calling. I thank you right now, Heavenly Father God. Hallelujah. God, for a full surrender in this house. Father God, I wish, glory to God, Heavenly Father, that there were more people here to hear this word and be stirred up, Lord God. But God, I just thank you, Lord God, that your word is effective and Lord God, it is in this atmosphere. That every person that comes in here, Lord God, that this word would find them well. That this word would bring about a transformation in their life. Heavenly Father God, that this word, Lord God, may mark a new beginning in their lives. God, I thank you right now that they shall exercise the gift that's been given unto them. Heavenly Father, speak, Lord God, hallelujah, to the wind, to speak to the sea, Lord God. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you right now. And you said, Lord God, God, that where there is chaos, where there is confusion, there is place for every evil work. But God, we thank you now. We rebuke it right now, every chaos every confusion, God, everything, God, that is hindering the man and woman of God, hallelujah, from coming forth in this place, Lord God, we thank you right now that they shall give themselves to the call that you're calling them unto, Lord God, and every child, God, every child, God, every man, woman, boy, and girl in this house shall give themselves to the call, even them all. Heavenly Father God, as we move forward in sync with your spirit, that we can manifest all that we're supposed to be. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody come on and clap your hands for the Lord.